praise the Lord. We welcome you to worship and praise the Lord. We welcome you.
strong in us. And you demonstrated your love through your mercy and your grace through your son, Jesus Christ. And that's why we praise you, Lord, because you're God all by yourself. You've shown yourself to be a loving God. And we give you all the glory and the praise. Bless us as the word goes forth, Lord. Give us what to say and how to say. And let us not only be hearers, the doers, receivers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing a familiar song.
but even more in the eyes of those in the visible church. God has a PR, public relations problem. <coughs> He's suffering from inflation. We know about inflation even if we don't know the definition of inflation. We know about it. Inflation is a sharp rise in the prices of goods and services. Uh -huh. Can you say $7 for regular gas? Did we get any improvement in the quality of gas? <laughs> Did you get more gas? Um, a more gallon, does that gallon stretch? No. So now, as a result, your paycheck, in whatever form it comes in, it due to a sharp rise in the prices of goods. Just three weeks ago, gas prices were going back down. And some of us were shouting and dancing because gas had gotten down to $4.79 a gallon, Brother Jordan. We were excited. Ooh. Mm. I wish the election would hurry up and come. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> the election is just about right here. 629, 639, and don't go to Chevron. <laughs> Don't go to Chevron, okay? Thank the Lord. For $10, you only get one and a half gallons of gas. That's for your lawnmower if you ride it. <laughs> so God is suffering from inflation. What do I mean? Uh, he's suffering from inflation in the sense that many in the visible church are basically saying that their, the cost of their salvation, which involves living saved, the cost of salvation has surpassed the pay. The pay of salvation. What I get out of salvation is not paying for the cost. Thank the Lord. You can tell this is going to be one of those shouting messages, right? I don't mean to shout me down and tell me to get off the stage. It's going to, that's not what I'm talking about. God is suffering from inflation. But also, he's suffering from deflation. Deflation is just sort of the opposite. Deflation means to just, it has three definitions, to collapse through the release of contained gas or air. A ball is deflated, a tire is deflated. Um, my car, my wife informed me this morning that the car told her that all four of our tires are low. We're supposed to have 32 pounds in there, and all four of our tires are at 30 pounds. And so the, the, the car let us know that. And I didn't have a heart attack. I didn't pull my hair out, but the little I have left, I just said, we'll air it up after service. But the point is the tires were deflated a little bit. Deflation also means to reduce or lessen in importance or magnitude. Mm. Starting to get a little bit closer now, huh? Deflation means to reduce <coughs> in value, as in your money, or the amount affecting a decline in prices. Now, some of us in here including me, we would love it 
if all of a sudden, by the end of the month, gas prices were down to 99 cents a gallon. I got one amen. Thank the Lord. I got somebody that they say that's keeping it real. But do you understand what that would mean for <laughs> already hitting your minds? I don't care what it means for everybody else. All I care is that I can take a $10 bill and fill up my gas tank. Okay? But did you not know that that would mean almost a collapse of the economy? For it to drop that far, that quickly? Uh, I'm reminded a few years ago, I guess it's been 10 years ago, I don't know, I don't keep up exactly, but McDonald's started the $1 menu, okay? That's all right, darling, you know, you know how I talk about that, the $1 menu. Uh-huh. And did you not know shortly after that, you saw one dollar menus everywhere. Okay. Maybe the dollar, maybe McDonald's was following the 99 cent store, the dollar store. And now there's there's a worldwide one dollar menu. And you find out, you mean that the 32 ounce soda I, I can get that for a dollar? Huh. Okay, so the two ninety nine you've been charging me has been a rip off. <laughs> right. Right. Because they know that deflating the prices would get people to participate more. But it's it's really more of a collapse and a lowering of the price. The enemy wants us to believe that the cost of salvation and living saved, the cost, what God is requiring of me has surpassed the pay. So instead of a big God and a shrinking world, many in the visible church see a Shrinking God with a big world. Lord help us. I know I'm telling you. And so we have in our minds how God is supposed to be. We think that God is supposed to be bigger, and then in our minds, what we think of what big is. Big is a relative term. Yes, it is. We have in our minds a big God will make sure that I don't have any problems. A big God will answer, and if I do have problems, if God slips up and something gets past him, I need him to respond within 60 seconds. That's the big God that I believe he is. As a matter of fact, I think that if I get sick, he should heal me immediately. If somebody says something against me, I think a big God should strike them down right then and there. <laughs> now just remember, somebody else may be thinking of a big God in the same way towards you. Let that soak a little bit. You thinking that God needs to strike them down, and you may need to <laughs> lean real quick to avoid a lightning bolt. Because he's a big God. I understand him to be a big God, and this is how he's supposed to be. I'm reminded of in John, the third chapter, and it's 22 through 30. We're not going to read that. But John himself talked about as Jesus came, he said, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And then he made this statement. He said, the one who's coming, he's supposed to increase and I decrease. Yes, yes. 
I'm supposed to decrease. Well, Jesus, well, Some of us think that when God increases, we're supposed to increase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now all the Bible says, John said, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I'm supposed to decrease. Yes. And he's supposed to increase. Yes. So what do we call a big God? What's our opinion of a big God? Well, Jesus, well, Jesus. We know what our opinion is of a big world. We see a big world because it looks like things are out of control in this world. We're recovering from COVID. Yes. And, and we're, as we're recovering from COVID worldwide, now, Recovering just means that it's not reported as much. Wait, did I say that out loud? Yeah, I said that out loud. There's still COVID out there. Oh, yeah. It's all over the place. But it's not being reported as much. We have in our minds that, well, this, this is a big world and things are just out of control. What are some of the areas that we see where the world, it looks like it has gotten bigger and God has shrunk? Well, uh, we see the world encourages us to express ourselves any kind of way that we want to express ourselves. And we feel like the world is just given, given us all the options that we want. You can say whatever is on your mind and say it however you want to say it. My God. But God, well, he tells you that we're to have self-control and temperance. He tells us that a fool speaks everything that comes to his mind or her mind. My Lord, my Lord. So we say, oh God, God is a, he's shrinking. But the world gives me freedom. I can do whatever I want to do. Lord help us, Lord help us. Uh, in our entertainment, the world has expanded everything. Everything is available to us. Mm. Profanity, sex, nudity, um, <laughs> God's name being used in a derogatory way, all, all of these, all the flavors of the world are available. Hmm. But God is, he's small, he's restricting us. We can only do certain things. The world offers me all kinds of careers. I can be anything I want to be. That's all right. Yes, I can do it, whatever it is. But God tells us to be careful about the things that we decide to do. Don't say in your mind that, oh, in a year from now, I'm going to move to another country and start a business. I got it all planned out. Uh -huh. the, I'm, I'm talking about a scripture. Where, where a person says, that's what I'm going to do. And they don't consider God because God is too restrictive. My God. He's a small God. He's shrinking. Oh, the world offers prosperity. But God wants me to be poor. The world tells us when it comes to suffering, that there's bad news all over the place. Everybody is in confusion and everything is messed up. And God says, yeah, I'm in control. Even the devil himself, who is the prince of this world, I'm in charge of him. When it comes to evangelizing, the world tells us and has influenced the church that we need to talk about people's 
felt needs. You know what the expression felt needs is talking about? It's talking about preach things such as personal work. Preach self-esteem. Preach feel good about yourself. Preach being all you can be. Uh, preach about camaraderie and just friendship and make that the reason that you are involved in the church and, and participate in the things of God. But God is talking about that we must individually, we must individually understand that he hates sin. And that what he came to do was to seek and save those that are lost. Yeah. He didn't come to offer you success. He came to offer you salvation. Yeah. He didn't come just to offer healing for your body. He came to offer holiness. He didn't come to offer just prosperity. He came to offer peace with God. Yes. Sometimes it seems like the world has become too big and God has become too small. In Exodus, the 13th chapter, the Bible shows us that the children of Israel, we're going to turn to that real quick. Exodus 13, 1 through 3. And it repeats itself several times, both in the 1 through 3 and 24 through, through 33, and then in the next chapter, the 14th chapter. I just want you to hear a statement. In Exodus 13, it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever it openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both the man and beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. If, if he says that again at the end of the chapter, at the beginning of the 14th chapter, God was telling Moses, remind the people of what I've done for you. Remind them of how I brought you out. Remind them that I am a big God. Yes. Remind them that there's nothing too hard for God. Wow. Mother Phillips liked to say, she would correct me on it lovingly. She said, you don't have to say nothing too hard for God. She said, you can say there's nothing hard for God. Yes. See, sometimes we think that there's some things that are hard, and then there's some things that are too hard. But for God, there's nothing even hard. He doesn't even have to work up a sweat to do what he's going to do. Because all he has to do is think it. And it's done. Mm. Mm. God has to be careful about what he thinks. Because it's going to happen as soon as he does it, Brother Joy. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Just by what comes to his mind. It's not hard for him. And so God was reminding the children of Israel. Telling Moses, tell them, I'm a big God. And now here I am about to take, bring you out of Egypt over into the promised land. I want you to remember this. You have a wilderness in front of you. But remember, I'm still a big God. You have armies that you're going to have to fight. But remember, I'm still a big God. 
You're going to have a situation where there's no water in the wilderness, but I'm still a big God. You're going to have moments when there's no food, but I'm still a big God. I'm reminded later on as they actually, this was, this was when they were leaving out of Egypt. This is now later on as they're getting ready to actually go into Canaan land. The Lord told them to send some land surveyors. Send some, call realty.com and tell them to go over into Canaan land and inspect the property. And when you go over there, come back with a report. And they went over and they inspected the property. And they came back and they said, we have to admit the property is amazing. You talking about location, location, location. It's outstanding. There's, there's, there's a land flowing with milk and honey, just like God said. Yes, yes. Thank the Lord. It is great, just like God said. And from hearing them starting off, you would think they're about to add on, we serve a big God. Mm. Because the grapes were so big that it took two of us to carry them. Thank the Lord. To carry a bunch of grapes. The, the land was flowing with milk. That doesn't mean that the river was running with milk. It's talking about there was so much cattle there, milk producing cattle. And the land was flowing with milk and with honey. In order for there to be honey, that means that the crops that were growing there, they were so plentiful. There was alfalfa, there was cotton. I'm just making up the crops. I don't know which crops they were. Okay. There were, there were orange trees. There were almond trees, and they were just packed with blossoms. And therefore, there were bees that came. And the bees came, and they, they pollinated each one of those. And it was so bountiful for the bees. There were so many plants there. And the land was so bountiful that the bees were able to go back and to produce so much honey that there was honey all over the place. It was flowing with milk and with honey. However, there were giants there. There was big food, big milk, big grapes, but there were, yes, it's redundant, there were big giants. And so after all of that, of all of these things that were big, but the God we serve, he's shrunk. He's so small that he can't deal with that. And if God has shrunk, we sure enough have shrunk. We're down to the size of grasshoppers. We... <laughs> We, that, that's part of the problem. We thought we were the ones that were going to get the victory. So since God has shrunk, then we've shrunk. Well, Jesus. But then Caleb and Joshua. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They made a declaration. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They said, if our big God. Oh, yes. Yes. yes delights in us. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If our big God yeah. delights in us, we will overcome this little land. Yeah. Hallelujah. We'll overcome the little giants. We'll overcome the little enemies. We'll overcome the little storms. Overcome 
delights in us or even overcome the hurts that we involve experience in the church. If our big God delights in us, we will have the victory. If our big God delights in us, even when it looks like we lose, we win.
I'm over it. Yes. I'm over it. Yes. But Lord, now it's grown to 99 stories high. This is high, that's as tall as that, that, that building in what, Mumbai, the tallest building in the world. It, it's, it's, it's over 100 stories high. I'm greater than that. Yes. What's, yes. what's your question? What's the problem? Yes, yes. Whatever the problem is, yes. I'm over it. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Be oh. of good cheer. Oh, yes. I have overcome. I've overcome what? The world. The world. Yes. Follow. Follow. The one that you think has gotten so big. Mm. I've overcome it. Yes, yes, yes. Let's stand at this time. Oh, You're going through a lot of things. I know you are. Uh, you're going through tests and trials. The older saints used to sing a song, Take Me Through. Dear Lord, take me through. Take me through. Dear Lord, take me through. And I'll do what you want me to do. See, those, those songs sound simple that the older folks used to sing. Oh, but they had a powerful part at the end. Yeah, yeah. And I'll do what you want me to do. I'm your child, dear Lord. I'm your child. I'm your child, dear Lord. I'm your child. And I'll do what you want me to do. But there are giants. And I'll do what you want me to do. The trials are fiery. It's bad enough that you get shot with a dart or a spear. But the spear or dart is on fire? Lord have mercy. <laughs> I mean, you look at situations, sometimes the devil will tell you to to just tell the Lord, now, now this is ridiculous. <laughs> you let me be shot with a dart and, the, and there's flames. While there's in my flesh, there's flames, there's smoking. <laughs> it's all right you shot me, Lord, but don't turn me into barbecue. But regardless, said, think it not strange, the fiery darts that come to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. And then Peter added on at the end of that verse, because the purpose is so that God will be glorified in you. So he will give you the victory over the test, the trials, and the darkness. And then it's so that he will be glorified. Gracious Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you because you are a big God. And not just relatively speaking in our minds and our limited understanding, but Lord, you are the greatest. You are the one true oh, yes. living God. And with that in mind, Lord, whatever we encounter, whatever we have to deal with, whatever we have to go through, no matter how painful, Lord, oh God, and you know the pain, you know, you know how hurtful it can be. You know how strenuous the test can be. Where it looks like, Lord, that we just don't have any more strength. Lord, you've already promised that you would give us strength. You've already promised the victory. And we can do all things through you. Lord, let us remember this. And Lord, whatever we experience on today or tomorrow or next week, that we put it in perspective. We think of you and allow that thing, that test, to shrink. And let the world shrink, Lord. Let it shrink, Lord. Let
that you will be magnified in our eyes and others will see our good works and glorify you. We ask these blessings in your son's name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God that we serve a big God. Come on, let's give a big God a prayer. Come on, that's good. Remember, he's the prince. Give him the greatest prayer.
And again, we just encourage you to uh, invite somebody to join you. It's good to see those who are here yeah, in the yeah. house of the Lord that you are blessed to be here on today. Amen. And we're glad to see you. Amen. We just want to thank you for uh, joining us and God bless.